Welcome to It's a Woman's World, a show which discusses any and all topics under the sun from a woman's point of view. Today's moderator is Janita Flowers. Welcome to It's a Woman's World, another installment of our African American Women's Issues Forum. My name is Janita Flowers, and joining me today is my co-host, Dara Beavis. How are you? Hey, Janita. I'm so excited to see you. It's so good to see you, yeah. and congratulations on baby Genesis. Thank you. So exciting. We'll have to talk yep. about that later. Yep. She's here. She's watching us. Yes. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking a little bit about um, the role of mental health and therapy in the African American community and the impact it's having on our families. And I have two fabulous guests with me today that are going to shed some light on that topic for us. Us. And first we have Shanae Rudolph. Hi, Shanae. Hey, how are you? Good. And Shanae is a mental health practitioner mm -hmm. with her master's in marriage and family therapy. Yes. I can't wait to hear more about your perspective. Yes, I'm excited. And then we have Rashida Fisher. How are you today? I am well, thank you. And mm -hmm. Rashida is also um, a mental health counselor and she is currently working on her PhD in counseling education and supervision. Yes. I can't wait to hear about your perspective as well. I'm excited for the discussion. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for joining us. So I think just to get us started today, let's talk a little bit about your paths to the role of mental health or in the mental health community. What led you to where you are today and to um, pursue a career where you're basically helping families be stronger um, and figure out stuff that they're dealing with? Mm -hmm. So um, just starting early on, I feel that my story has always been that people always came to me for different things. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel that tends to be a lot of therapist stories that there's this natural draw um, where it would be total strangers would just come and just talk to me and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> hey. Um, but it began to be something that just kind of came naturally and just being from a big family, I always valued um, a genuineness of just love and understanding mm -hmm. um, and of stories um, and that they're real and um, people need to hear more of them. We need mm -hmm. more stories. Um, and so growing up, I got into college and then I'd kind of was like, well, maybe I want to be a pediatrician. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to work with families, but I didn't know in what way. Um, my senior year in undergrad, I heard about marriage and family therapy. And mm -hmm. I was like, that's it. That's mm -hmm. what I need to do. Um, got my master's in marriage and family therapy. I'm now a licensed associate marriage and family therapist working towards full licensure, um, working specifically with African-American children and families. Wow. Um, and I find that that is my passion. And I'm that's amazing. continuing mm -hmm. to explore what that means, yeah. what that looks like, how I show up in that, yes. um, what my role is, um, and, and it's, it's just been an awesome, awesome journey. Awesome, mm -hmm. amazing, thank you for sharing that. Thank Rashida, you. what about you? Well, you know, it's definitely been an organic journey um, for me that started really with my own um, early childhood experiences with uh, difficulties with um, family stress. And so like everyone else that is kind of attracted to the field, there's this natural inclination to help um, that, that feels really organic to who you are. Um, and, and then the universe really just setting a path for me that made it the right fit. And so when you have experienced um, difficulties, I think the, the ability for you to receive help and feel that that help has um, supported your wellness, you naturally want to give that back uh, yeah. to other individuals and foster that in, uh, in other individuals. And so that's really my story for entering the counseling profession, um, first as an addictions counselor, mm -hmm. um, and then specializing in mental health um, in general, so. You know, kind of just to pick up on, both of you are talking about <coughs> sort of the concept of helping others, people just being drawn to you. And I think um, rooted deep in the African-American community was people just helped each other. And yes. we just sort of dumped our problems or our situations on each other, never a professional involved, like, hey, this is what I'm going through. And somebody's like, well, get over it. Or, mm -hmm. okay, I'm sorry you had that. Now go do the dishes or something. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the helping really was sort of this informal thing that happened somewhere at home, at the barbershop, at the hair yes. salon, mm -hmm. at yes. church. Yes, it, and yeah. so it, yeah. it minimized, I think, some of the struggles or things that people mm -hmm. may really be going through. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing more and more African-American, whether it's children, family, families, men, women that are coming and seeking help, or do you think there still is that stigma of we don't really need a therapist, we don't need an outsider knowing our personal business? Mm -hmm. What's your perspective on that? Mm 
I think it's both and. Yep. I think there's still a lot of stigma. Mm -hmm. um, and to be perfectly honest, a lot of that comes from the mental health community wow. itself. Wow. Um, wow. Um, with the experience of seeking help um, mm -hmm. and then feeling um, not fully supported yep. in that environment. Um, and there are a lot of people that once they get exposure to it, whether it is of their choosing or not, mm -hmm. they realize the benefit yes. of it. And it can be a really great thing if they have a health, healthy and full yeah. um, encouraging experience in that setting. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. It's, it's, a, it's a hooking them mm -hmm. into knowing that we can make this work. Yeah. Um, and you have somebody who's here ready to fight with and for you. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I totally agree with Rashida that you have to get to a place where you can show them that this isn't um, this picture that society has painted as yeah. bad or wrong or yeah. if you go here and do this then you're this some crazy person, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but that you can actually, we all have well-being. We all have yeah. mental health that we need to take care of. Mm -hmm. So it's reframing it in a way to say, this is your avenue to get the help that you need and the resources, let's try it. Maybe mm -hmm. as black women too, we don't suggest therapy enough to one another mm -hmm. or share that we have a therapist. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I am the first person to say, I love therapy mm -hmm. and I've had a therapist since I was in my late 20s and mm -hmm. I did it as self-care just mm -hmm. to just to have support. Your friends are gonna tell you what you wanna hear. Your family has a predisposed position on how they see you. And for me, it was just a freeing just to have somebody to, to lean on who could guide me in different life mm -hmm. circumstances. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I feel as though I've shared that with people and you do get like, well, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you depressed? Well, and that speaks to this myth of this strong black woman. Yep. Yeah. Right? That there is no yeah. room for in feelings of insecurity. Right. There's no room for needing help mm -hmm. and yeah. seeking help because really the whole world is looking for you mm -hmm. to be their uh, stability. And mm -hmm. show right the burden to of everybody's Absolutely. Yeah. And so we're not given permission to not be okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And therapy can very much give you permission to not be okay mm -hmm. and, right. and be okay at the same time. Yeah. We mm -hmm. struggle in society in general with uh, duality of yes, things, absolutely. being able to hold two things simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's, a, it's a real challenge that I can be angry mm -hmm. and still at you even mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and still love you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can have mm -hmm. both feelings at the same time. Wow. So I can be Powerful. strong, I can be mm -hmm. confident, I can be self-sufficient, and I can need help yeah. right. at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and people ahead. miss that there's so much strength in that. Right. Absolutely. And, and coming to that realization to say, yep, I'm mad. Mm -hmm. I am mad. Like a lot of families that I work with say, mm -hmm. no, you have a right to feel to be everything you yes. feel. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you have mm -hmm. a right to voice that. Now, let's find a way to do it in a way that benefits you. Right. Um, but that's the key is that, no, you can do this. Like, don't let society put you in this box and say you yes. have to act this way. Yes. And again, it goes back to that strong black woman that I have right. to be this person. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, I can sit and say, I need help. And I'm strong right. and there's strength yep. in me needing that help. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And I think even taking it a step further with, it may be self-care, but when we get into the area of a diagnosis, because you know, mm -hmm. going back mm -hmm. a lot of times and rooted deep in our community, it never was any sort of diagnosis. It was just, well, we all had that crazy uncle, mm -hmm. yes. or you always have, yes. you have, I mean, that's how people labeled yeah. it, you mm -hmm. know, or yes. you have that one aunt, you know what, don't do certain things around yes. that person. Mm -hmm. yes. And we never were okay with allowing a therapist to come in, work with you and tell you really what's going on so then you can work mm -hmm. on whatever it is that you're dealing with. And I think there's some validation Mm -hmm. and then you can actually get tools mm -hmm. to create that healthier yeah, life absolutely. when you start to seek out a therapist. I don't know if you're mm -hmm. seeing that, but I know diagnosis is mm -hmm. still tough in our community. And diagnosis yes. is even tough for therapists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are many therapists mm -hmm. that do not like to use that manual, the mm -hmm. Diagnostic and Statistical mm -hmm. Manual mm -hmm. of Mental Illness, mm -hmm. right? That DSM-5, we throw it around and there is a place for it. Yeah. Um, while it doesn't give uh, the whole picture of who a person is, mm -hmm. it does help us explain a collection of symptoms yeah. that are causing distress and discomfort in your life. Mm -hmm. And I th mm -hmm. the, the job of the therapist is to normalize mm -hmm. what it is that's happening 
when we engage in therapy, mm -hmm. especially for African Americans and other people of color where the mental health system is, also, is oftentimes an adjunct or mm -hmm. uh, feels like a part of other systems mm -hmm. that have created lots of um, hurt, mm -hmm. you know, and betrayal yeah. um, and has, has challenged our sense of self mm -hmm. because we don't fit into the, the norm, the dominant mm -hmm. culture. And so therapy is to normalize your reaction to negative adverse situations, that this mm -hmm. happens to lots of people. Mm -hmm. And when you experience mm -hmm. this, this, and this, at the same time, it's called this. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's a way to describe what right. you are going exactly. through. Exactly. And once you can acknowledge it, then you can do the work to remove yourself from it. Mm -hmm. Like if you're constantly in denial of what's going on and what's yeah. happening, you can't put a name to it. Yep. So then you continue to walk in this perception as, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to keep going. Mm -hmm. But once you can name it, then you can say, that's what that is. Now I can take the steps and learn mm -hmm. the tools and do what I need to do to remove myself from that. So then I can say, okay, now I'm this person and I'm whole mm -hmm. and I have this stuff, yeah. but now I can keep working towards not having that or con um, um, significantly limiting that part of my life and yeah. increasing the strengths and tools that I now have to keep going. And what happens if a person or a family doesn't do that? You know, it, it creates... Um, it creates a cycle mm -hmm. yeah. of maladaptive I, behaviors yeah. mm -hmm. that become normalized mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and unfortunately create more distress mm -hmm. yeah. um, and discomfort mm -hmm. um, and poor functioning mm -hmm. in that individual's lives and then in the, the collective family unit. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's really important. You know, we talk about breaking the cycle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what therapy can do is break the cycle, mm -hmm. give enough space to create a new way of mm -hmm. living and being mm -hmm. um, in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the self-care piece. I think that's so important, especially with, I um, mean, you're a new mom, you know, I have two kids, and whether it's, you know, a woman who's just starting her career, yes. um, you yeah. know, people celebrate when you say, yep, I go get my nails done, I go to the spa, I get um, you know, yes, I get those <laughs> things, but like you said, the minute you tell someone, you know what, I have a therapist, like, what happened to you? <laughs> you know, how can the we encourage... I ever made. Yes, I mean, because <laughs> when you think about it, I mean, why can't you have a professional help you when you're making a transition in life, mm -hmm. um, when you're experiencing new things, like maybe you're a new mom, or maybe you just got married, or maybe you just moved to a new city, whatever mm -hmm. it is, there's emotions and changes that go along with that, that if you talk it through with someone, mm -hmm. you may be able to adapt or get in front mm -hmm. of things quicker, where you can celebrate and enjoy the experience, mm -hmm. where if you don't, you may be isolated, you may have all these other things that come out, so mm -hmm. how can we um, encourage or celebrate mm -hmm. or promote the beauty or just just the validation of self-care mm -hmm. when you work with a professional that can help you talk through these major transitions in your life. Mm -hmm. I don't know what some tips you guys may have. You mm -hmm. know, I really normalize it. I try to normalize it as much as possible um, for individuals and say, you know, if your car was broken, mm -hmm. you would go to a person mm -hmm. that specializes in fixing cars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If your uh, floors needed repairing, mm -hmm. you would find someone that specializes in fixing floors. Whatever it is in life, there are special, there are people mm -hmm. that specialize mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. fixing, repairing, restoring those things. Mental health professionals are in the business. Our profession is understanding the human condition mm -hmm. and supporting mm -hmm. wellness mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. human condition. Um, that's why I like counseling more than I like psychology. Mm -hmm. Psychology mm -hmm. really focuses on diagnosis mm -hmm. and it's a very deficit based model, mm -hmm. problem based. Mm -hmm. Counseling, um, mental health, uh, marriage and family therapy, mental health counseling mm -hmm. focuses on health and wellness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are a wellness based yeah. profession mm -hmm. and so our job is about understanding what's not working well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and finding ways to support developing wellness in those areas based on the strengths that you already have. Mm -hmm. And so for, for self-care, when you're feeling a little off mm -hmm. in a certain area, why not come to someone mm -hmm. that specializes in 
lifting you up mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. your best self because mm -hmm. that's what we specialize in mm -hmm. and I don't think it's talked about enough I mean if you think yeah. about you know there's stroke awareness month there's breast cancer yeah. Mm -hmm. awareness month there's mm -hmm. you know just so many different things and I think e or even when we pull in like maybe the church you know because that's a huge mm -hmm. area of support and mm -hmm. information um, dissemination yeah. in the African American community but there's never this platform where we say you know what this is mental health awareness month and we really just want to focus on self-care mm -hmm. and we have someone here that's going to tell you the benefits of you know having a healthy mind and body mm -hmm. you know like we don't mm -hmm. celebrate that so how do we get that message out I mean I kind of think that um, that in my experience as an African-American, you went to church to, you know, lay your burdens at the altar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now that I speak to a counselor regularly, I mean, not that I don't have faith as a big part of my life, but I need actual counseling around travel for my family. Well, would you, well, you know, Megan, what should I do? <laughs> Can I go to Africa right. and Jamaica? Should I, should I, you know, I, maybe living abroad is something that we want to do. We talk about goals. We talk about dreams, aspirations, mm -hmm. stress. I mean, I think part of it is that if more people, mm -hmm. especially black people, particularly black women, if they knew that they could actually have a support system someone who is emotionally invested in your success as a human, I just don't see one woman who would have an objection to that. And specifically for women, the, the best part is you get to take. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yeah. therapist is not there to take from you. Right. Mm -hmm. They are yeah. solely there for you to take right. and get what you need without yeah. any expectation of returning the favor. Mm. Exactly. That is a beautiful yes. thing. Mm. Like you get to I'm be have nourished. To replay that just yeah. over and over <laughs> once know? a week. Yeah. I'm taking that. <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> just, just give. Just yeah. give. That's Absolutely. Phenomenal. Absolutely. That's that phenomenal. is the beauty of the relationship. Yeah. It is a truly a one-way relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that may look a little different um, in communities of color, mm -hmm, especially mm -hmm. with um, with African Americans. We tend to. Um, expect and want a little bit more self-disclosure from mm. our therapist. What do we you want mean it by to that? feel well. In general, the counseling profession is very well. It's it's a range, but the idea is that the therapist does not disclose mm -hmm. very much about themselves. That oh. it is made because then they superimpose right. their I values, see. their beliefs onto yeah. the other person. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. because we know the human mm -hmm. condition, mm -hmm. we can also manipulate yep. it, yeah. right, yep. and influence. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that we're not doing too much of that. Right. But with communities of color, um, there tends to be much more kind of, of giving mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in that relationship because we're communal people, yeah. right? And we, yeah. we want to know that who you are, response, yeah. right? <laughs> Absolutely, that call and response. Mm -hmm. And um, but even with even with the nuances of culture, mm -hmm. it's still a one way. It's still large one way relationship yeah. where the the counts uh, the client or the person receiving therapy is taking, yeah. Yeah. and the therapist is only there to give. Yeah, and I know I tell a lot of people that I am just here on the journey with you. Mm -hmm. Like this is your journey. This is your mm -hmm. story. Um, you are the expert of yeah. your mm -hmm. life. I am here with you, yep. um, and I think that in itself turns the therapy sessions or anything because then they're like, oh, you're here for me. Mm -hmm. Like you're seeing me right now. It's not me mm -hmm. trying to, again, self-disclose and dump all my stuff on you because it can be easy to do that. Yeah. But no, this is this is your time with me. Yep. And this is what I'm here for. And this is what I've gotten my education and schooling or whatever things that are naturally innate in me. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm here to do. And so you can bring your stuff to yeah. me. And not saying that people, like kind of you mentioned church, like you can still go to church and you can do all that faith is a huge part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also have somebody with you mm -hmm. along that journey as well to say, mm -hmm. hey, yeah. let's look at this a little deeper. And regularly. You know, and regularly and yeah. to validate those points and to normalize a lot of things to say, hey, this is some, <laughs> let's look at this. I don't let's think you paid attention to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> because until it, it, is, um, it comes to our awareness, Again, it's non-existent. Mm -hmm. Do you this both so see, good. I know. <laughs> <It's> so good. <laughs> Do you both see... Um, situations where somebody or a family is in crisis mode and you think, gosh, if I had just gotten to them 
a year sooner mm -hmm. or a decade sooner. Absolutely. Does that happen? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All the time. There are um, clients where you really think, wow, what what would have happened? Um, maybe you know that they they discontinue without notification mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. And you worry, you wonder about them, you wonder about how they're doing. Um, this is a high touch profession, yeah. a high caring profession. Yeah. You have to use your heart mm -hmm. um, as a counselor, and it takes a lot of work to um, to give. Yeah. And you know, and then find our own ways to replenish. Mm -hmm. Do you both? Um, is how how does mental health play into your lives as healthcare as mental health professionals? Well, I, and I'm glad you said healthcare professionals because we are healthcare mm -hmm, professionals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, your emotional health, your mm -hmm. mental health, is a part of your whole wellness, yep. your whole um, healthcare plan. Mm -hmm. So you have to eat well, mm -hmm. you have to exercise, mm -hmm. yep. right? You have to get good sleep, mm -hmm. and you need to take care of your emotional and your mental health. That's right. Um, and so we get to be a part of that for people. They say a lot of therapists have their own therapists. That's, you know, that's common because you do need a place where you you, do. you can oh be the one God, that's yes. receiving too. Yes. Uh -huh. You you I have a lot of people who say, "Oh, you just sit and listen to people." And mm -hmm. it's like, "No, no sweetie." <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so good. much more, it's, you, more than it's way more. Uh -huh. You are holding so much stuff, mm -hmm. yeah. so many stories. Um, it is so much pain, mm -hmm. and you have to walk around mm -hmm. daily mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. holding people's stuff yeah. on top of your stuff mm -hmm. and family members. You know, it's like yeah. you're holding so much at one time that you have to have a place to say, I need to let all mm -hmm. of this out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need you to be ready for what's about to happen. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just going to happen. But um, people don't understand how um, that can be physically and emotionally exhausting. Yes. Um, and learning yes. have to be very intentional and skillful mm -hmm. um, in not taking too much home. Mm -hmm. You know, because yeah. you, then you have to go home. Having that detachment and you, a little bit too. You have to because it, it is so heartfelt. Yeah. Um, you you mm -hmm. care for the people you work with. Um, you hope so. You hope so. <laughs> I tell people, like, yeah. if you don't love what you do, you cannot be, be in, in this, this field. Mm -hmm. You cannot. You mm -hmm. can't go in mm -hmm. as somebody who's completely detached from mm -hmm. the world. It's, in, I think it's impossible. <laughs> yes. um, and so you, you have to learn how to navigate that. And sometimes we're navigating alongside the people we're working with. We're mm -hmm. learning as they're learning. Mm -hmm. you know? And we <laughs> use our colleagues. You know, oh, the great man. thing is, you know, we I can go to my co-therapist or, mm -hmm. you know, my colleague in the next office and mm -hmm. say, oh, my goodness, I have this client. Can mm -hmm. I consult with you for mm -hmm. a minute? Mm -hmm. I really don't know. I'm getting caught up. You know, are my blinders on? Mm -hmm. Is my stuff mm -hmm. coming up? Mm -hmm. And how I'm interacting with this person? Mm -hmm. What do I need to do differently? Yeah. Absolutely. And the and the beauty is is that you know that cycle of helping just keeps going, mm -hmm. just yeah. keeps going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think culture plays a big role when it comes to therapy. And while everyone goes to school and there's a certain, you know, the specific credentials that you have to have to be a mm -hmm. therapist mm -hmm. that makes you qualified to be able to support mm -hmm. someone on their journey. Mm -hmm. But the piece that's not there, that's not mandated is the culture piece. And I think yeah. It's so important, mm -hmm. um, but African-American therapists are hard to find, at least in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about um, things that are rooted, yes, there's trauma, mm -hmm. but then there's the culture pieces on there. Yes. Yeah. Um, in order to unpack some of that, you have to have not only the sensitivity, mm -hmm. but I think you have to have some of the knowledge yeah. in order to be able to yep. put together a solid game plan. Mm -hmm. What do you think, what role do you think plays, you know, I am talking like really professionally. I know mm -hmm. that's not a part of, you know, when you get your license, okay, you can specialize here, but <laughs> what role do you think culture plays when an individual is trying to, or they're on that path to wellness? Mm -hmm. It's everything. Huge. It is, mm -hmm. it is everything. And being um, a counselor, but then also being an educator for other counselors, it is a huge part of how we are training. More and more, uh, cultural competence, mm -hmm. multicultural competence is being infused into all of the coursework, infused into all of the training, and mandated. It is a requirement ethically mm -hmm. for you to be a counselor. Now, how that is demonstrated <laughs> day to day, <laughs> that's always the challenge. Mm -hmm. And so we need more and more people of color to desire to be a part of this profession.
to um, overlook the stigma mm -hmm. of, yeah. of <coughs> mental yeah. illness yeah. Um, and, to, and to want to be a part of this profession to help create more and more dialogue about what race and what ethnicity mm -hmm. um, does to shape a person's identity and how important that is for, for health yeah. and wellness. Mm -hmm. And we need people and clinicians of color who are ready to fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to be ready to fight. Um, I tell people mean? all the time, and yeah, and, and so what I mean by that is that you have to go in when you're going into communities of color. Being yeah. a clinician of color, you have to work harder. Mm. You have to fight harder because you have to show your people that I am in this system, mm -hmm. but I am fixing it to work for us. us. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, because we are a part of the system. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. And so we go in when people are almost more hesitant to be like, why are you different? A little suspicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you may look like me, mm -hmm. but you're in the system of people, who, a lot of people mm -hmm. don't look like me. Mm -hmm. um, and that system has never worked. Mm -hmm. So For what me. can you bring? So they almost see you as maybe an enemy at first. Right. And Absolutely. You have to mm -hmm. gauge mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. connection with them mm -hmm. to and so you, you have to go in ready to do some work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's wow. even another perspective because if you think about you know families that are dealing with a lot of trauma and when you say the system, so you have a lot of you know professionals that mm -hmm. represent this system mm -hmm. that are coming in. So you have maybe child protection mm -hmm. and you have the courts and you mm -hmm. have the mm -hmm. um, law enforcement and none of, all of them are typically, they don't look like the mm -hmm. African American mm -hmm. child mm -hmm. and they're taking parts of my family because as a child you don't quite understand right. the entire piece right. and so why should I trust you right and this they brought me here because I need to have that connection but as a 10 year old or 15 year old mm -hmm. why should I trust you mm -hmm. more than anyone else because you do represent that system yep. that has torn my family apart exactly so I can yeah. totally see that mm -hmm. I wouldn't have even mm -hmm. thought of that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and we are charged uh, as counselors we're charged to advocate for our clients mm -hmm. because a part of that multicultural competency is understanding the socio-political environment mm -hmm. in which people grow up in That's and right. how that environment impacts their wellness. Mm -hmm. We understand what those challenges look like, how it impacts a, a person's thought process, mm -hmm. how it in, mm -hmm. uh, impacts their self-image, yeah. and we're designed to not only help them manage that, but then also to work to change the system, mm -hmm. yeah. to use yeah. our voice, use our expertise to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think having more and more people of color in the field only supports the um, the power of that yeah. voice and of that yeah. advocacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, so we have a little less than a minute, and I really want to reinforce you know that as healthcare professionals it is so important for mm -hmm. black women moms you know just professional women to be able to consider that this is a part of your wellness yeah. Yeah. just like you go to the spa mm -hmm. just like you get your hair mm -hmm. done mm -hmm. having a therapist or a mm -hmm. mental health practitioner in your Rolodex mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. supports the way that you want to navigate the world in a healthy yes. and full of information way so that yes. you can go mm -hmm. forth and conquer this world. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I would echo that. Yep. Totally. Don't know a single woman who wouldn't benefit from therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I have my therapist on speed dial. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining it's us. It's been a pleasure. You. Thank this you. So amazing. With yes. the conversation. Thank you. Thank Keep you. up the good work. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. yes, yes. Thank Keep you. helping our community and all yes. the broader community yes. Yes. strong yes. and yes. healthy. Yes. yes. <laughs> and thank you for joining us on It's a Woman's World. See you next time.